Uh, good morning. Uh, in preparing for this presentation, I've been asking myself, what does a special collections librarian do? Does what we do really differ from what other librarians do? Not really. Our duties at, in the information profession, whether it be librarian, archivist, or curator, all hats that I wear in my day job, all come down to building relationships, whether they are over several years with colleagues or over a, just a few minutes with researchers. At San Francisco State, I do outreach and instruction with our students and the community related to our university's institutional history within the context of societal change. I am the first university archivist to be an alumna of San Francisco State. And I share my love of the university's history prior to the 1968-1969 student-led strike. Student activism today is different. Our student activists have a different agenda, a different destiny. I surface our early history that chronicles a continuum of educational innovation. San Francisco State's legacy is found in our bold and caring thinking, interactions, and ongoing community building, which makes us one of a kind in the region and internationally. San Francisco State was established as a normal school, a vocational school for teachers in 1899. It started a formal laboratory school in 1913 that served as the training ground for future teachers. Our founding president, Frederick Lister Burke, was a proponent of individualized instruction methods, and he in, uh, implemented rigorous curriculum. San Francisco State was the first normal school in the nation to require a high school diploma and an entrance exam for admission. Our motto is experience teaches. This phrase encapsulating our institutional character has served me well on my own life path. San Francisco State today reflects San Francisco State of yesteryear. Our students are changing and their approaches to information gathering and sharing as well as their information uh, needs. In the broadest sense, our curriculum does not compel all students to utilize our library. This is a challenge for our faculty librarians in their teaching. It's a battle that will deepen as curic curriculum explores visual media more than print media. Right now, the Bay Area Television Archive of all of the special collections in the J. Paul Leonard Library is best poised to serve up moving images in ways that appeal to today's students, many of which uh, are resistant to doing the kind of primary source research that requires digging deep into paper archives. That is, until they engage with our campus history. Many think that our multicultural character emerged during the 1960s, but it goes back to our formative years. Our second president, Archibald Anderson, forged connections throughout the Pacific Rim, especially in the Philippines during the 1910s, that likely paved the way for San Francisco State to develop an immigrant education program for the California Education Department. In 1921, a location in San Francisco's North Beach Telegraph Hill neighborhood was secured for uh, the People's Place where our student teachers taught English to adult immigrants who wanted to become citizens and younger immigrants who needed to enter the public school system. Sociologist, sociology professor Bertha Monroe initiated a series of courses for a system-wide immigrant education program in 1923. The following year, passage of the Immigrant Act of 1924, the Johnson-Reed Act, barred immigration from Asian countries, with the exception of Japan and the Philippines. The immigrant education program continued under Monroe's direction until World War II. Another example of our community-based work emerged during the 1930s, when San Francisco State became known as the music school for future teachers in the West. Students and faculty established the Music Federation that started a summer music workshop 
as a teacher training opportunity that provided music instruction to local high school students for nominal fees throughout the Great Depression. Uh, the book, the picture, and I haven't been using the slides, but the picture I used for the cover of our book has one of our alums, Tilly Schiller, who is still alive. She's in her 90s, and she's still very active with the alumni events. And one of our other alums was an editor for, the, for Arcadia Press. So we were the first West Coast university to have a book in their campus history series. San Francisco's current campus near Lake Merced was originally owned by the Spring Valley Water Company. And President uh, Alexander uh, Roberts, a man of great trust, actually allowed student body president Clifford Wirth to negotiate directly with the California State Legislature to fund the purchase of the land. And he was successful. We got uh, the funding in 1939. I've also included one of our jazz greats, bass player Vernon Alley, in today's talk because he's so cool. And Vernon embodied the community-mindedness of so many of our alumni. He studied music at San Francisco State before World War II with student te a student teacher named Norman Zeck, who was uh, just one year older. Young Zeck taught stringed instruments and was the son of San Francisco State music professor William Zeck, who has a music roots going back to the gold rush. Uh, Norman directed the summer music workshop orchestra and taught Vernon the fundamental fingering techniques for playing the bass that made him stand out as a jazz musician. When he returned to San Francisco after serving in the US Navy during World War II, with fellow Gator musicians, he maintained relationships with Cal Jader and Paul Desmond. Allie was a pioneering African-American musician in San Francisco broadcasting, working in the studio orchestras at KGO, KRON, and KPIX, all three networks, before hosting his own television and radio shows called Down Vernon's Alley. During the 1950s, he tore down racial barriers in the city as the chairman of the board of directors of the Black Musicians Union 669. He was instrumental in merging the black union and the white local six of the American Federation of Musicians in 1960. San Francisco State was a pioneer in integrating field work into science curriculum in the 1930s. It offered the first co-educational recreation program in the West in the 1940s. It was the first college to offer a college-sanctioned jazz course in the nation in the post-war years, and it was a pioneer in outdoor education for uh, urban students. Now a little bit about our 1960s student activists. San Francisco State's Forensics Union and Associated Students started lobbying for a speaker's platform in early 1959. In May 1960, San Francisco State students were involved in the violent protest of the House Committee on Un-American Activities hearings held just a few blocks away at San Francisco City Hall that culminated in an altercation on the interior marble, marble steps, you know, where people get their wedding pictures taken, when police used high-pressure fire hoses to force protesters back. The following year, San Francisco State faculty and students formulated a philosophy statement on student activities. It addressed student activities on and off campus, asserting, at San Francisco State College, students are respected as adults and the citizens of the community, and as such have the rights and responsibilities of adults and citizens to participate in college and community affairs. These rights and responsibilities are to be jealously guarded. This statement contained the underlying, underlying tenets of the subsequent Berkeley free speech movement. There was a fundamental difference in approaches between San Francisco State and UC Berkeley. The former affirmatively stated that students were accountable for their actions, while the latter delineated the negative disciplinary consequences for student political activism. 
our speakers platform, the first college sanctioned free speech platform in the nation, was dedicated in October 1962 with a banner mounted on the platform that read, free speech, welcome free speech. President Paul Dodd asserted at, I can, okay, asserted the open platform was needed to protect and promote intellectual intangibles. The open campus, campus discussion, he said, is a way of campus life. Associated Student President Jay Folberg stated, I encourage students to learn by doing. Experience teaches. San Francisco State has been the epicenter of re relevant education. This value I have taken to heart as I continue to stress the relevance of all the collections that I curate to the university's continuing curriculum. The Associated Students established the Experimental College in 1965 as a college within the college, offering alternative student-initiated courses focused on grassroots organizing. Students asserted that existing courses did not emphasize real-life situations and wanted to create the college within the college to emphasize a central principle of self-determination so that the classroom extended into the community. You may have seen recent headlines about the student-led hunger strike with four students using the name Third World Liberation Front 2016 on the campus. It started May, May 2nd. Um, and for a time, the action was located on the library plaza. During the 30th anniversary celebrations of the Labor Archives and Research Center, another special collection of the J. Paul Li Leonard Library, some of the strikers confronted San Francisco State President Leslie Wong as he visited the Lark exhibit. Now, how that, how's that for an interactive exhibit? Uh, last week, the two sides met and hashed out an agreement for further dialogues without the hunger strike. Almost 50 years ago, the Black Student Union was able to consolidate minority voices into a cohesive voice with the original Third World Liberation Front to make the 1968-1969 student-led strike effective in the establishment of the first College of Ethnic Studies. We were also likely one of the first three universities in the nation to establish a women's studies program. As far as I can see, we are still evolving along a progressive continuum striving for educational equity for all. San Francisco State was the first university in the California State University system to establish a disabled student services center. And located geographically at the epicenter of the AIDS epidemic, San Francisco State University's AIDS Coordinating, Coordinating Committee was the first campus-wide committee to facilitate integration of HIV AIDS awareness throughout our curriculum. I was a student when this curriculum was first implemented. So you can imagine how exciting it was to receive the committee's complete archive for the university archives earlier this year. Much of my work, writing and thinking, reflects themes found in our institutional memory. I pick and choose what's relevant to my lifelong learning. Our students keep me honest. This spring, I worked with 10 students in a political science class over a series of six sessions on a project related to the experimental college. I was shocked to find that they were not using the iLearn tools created by their professor. These students, the way they search for information is dramatically changing, and we as librarians need to pay attention. Our challenges in this sense are also our opportunities and cues for future relationship building. Thank you. And I have a handout if you want any of the, any of the uh, information from the, the speech. <laughs>